A gravitational wave observatory or gravitational wave detector is any device designed to measure gravitational waves, tiny distortions of spacetime that were first predicted by Einstein in 1916. Gravitational waves are perturbations in the theoretical curvature of spacetime caused by accelerated masses. The existence of gravitational radiation is a specific prediction of general relativity, but is a feature of all theories of gravity that obey special relativity. Since the 1960s, gravitational wave detectors have been built and constantly improved. The present-day generation of resonant mass antennas and laser interferometers has reached the necessary sensitivity to detect gravitational waves from sources in the Milky Way. Gravitational wave observatories are the primary tool of gravitational wave astronomy. A number of experiments have provided indirect evidence, notably the observation of binary pulsars, the orbits of which evolve precisely matching the predictions of energy loss through general relativistic gravitational wave emission. The 1993 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for this work. In February 2016, the Advanced LIGO team announced that they had detected gravitational waves from a black hole merger. The 2017 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for this work. Topic: Complications. The direct detection of gravitational waves is complicated by the extraordinarily small effect the waves produce on a detector. The amplitude of a spherical wave falls off as the inverse of the distance from the source. Thus, even waves from extreme systems such as merging binary black holes die out to a very small amplitude by the time they reach the Earth. Astrophysicists predicted that some gravitational waves passing the Earth might produce differential motion on the order 10 18 meters in a LIGO size instrument. Topic. Resonant mass antennas A simple device to detect the expected wave motion is called a resonant mass antenna, a large, solid body of metal isolated from outside vibrations. This type of instrument was the first type of gravitational wave detector. Strains in space due to an incident gravitational wave excite the body's resonant frequency and could thus be amplified to detectable levels. Conceivably, a nearby supernova might be strong enough to be seen without resonant amplification. However, up to 2018, no gravitational wave observation that would have been widely accepted by the research community has been made on any type of resonant mass antenna, despite certain claims of observation by researchers operating the antennas. There are three types of resonant mass antenna that have been built, the room temperature bar antennas, the cryogenically cooled bar antennas and cryogenically cooled spherical antennas. The earliest types of antennas were the room temperature bar shaped antennas called Weber bar, these were dominant in 1960s and 1970s and many were built around the world. It was claimed by Weber and some others in the late 1960s and early 1970s that these devices did observe gravitational waves, however, other experimenters failed to detect gravitational waves with these devices and thus it became consensus that these devices could not detect gravitational waves. The second generation of resonant mass antennas, developed in the 1980s and 1990s, were the cryogenic bar antennas which are also sometimes called Weber bars. There were in the 1990s five major cryogenic bar antennas, Origa, Padua, Italy, Nautilus, Rome, Italy, Explorer, CERN, Switzerland, Allegro, Louisiana, USA, Niobe, Perth, Australia. In 1997, these five antennas run by four research groups formed the International Gravitational Event Collaboration for collaboration. Over the years, many claims of detection of gravitational waves have been made by scientists using cryogenic bar antennas but none of these was accepted by the larger community. In 1980s there was also a cryogenic bar antenna called Altair, which along with a room temperature bar antenna called GEOGRAV was built in Italy as a prototype for later bar antennas. GEOGRAV detector was claimed by its operators to have seen gravitational waves coming from the supernova SN1987A along with another room temperature bar of Weber, but these claims were also dismissed by the wider community. These modern cryogenic forms of the Weber bar operated with superconducting quantum interference devices to detect vibration see for example, Allegro. Some of them are still in operation, for example Origa, an ultracryogenic resonant cylindrical bar gravitational wave detector based at INFN in Italy. 
The Auriga and LIGO teams have collaborated in joint observations. It is the current consensus that current cryogenic Weber bars are not sensitive enough to detect anything but extremely powerful gravitational waves. As of 2018, no observation of gravitational waves by cryogenic Weber bars has occurred. In the 2000s, the third generation of resonant mass antennas, the spherical cryogenic antennas, emerged. Four spherical antennas were proposed around year 2000 and two of them ended up being built others were cancelled as downsized versions. The proposed antennas were Grail Netherlands, proposal that when downsized became Minigrail, Tiga USA, small prototypes made, Sfera Italy, Graviton Brazil, proposal that when downsized became Mario Schenberg. Currently there are two cryogenic spherical gravitational wave antennas in the world, the Minigrail and the Mario Schenberg. These antennas are actually a collaborative effort, having much in common. Minigrail is based at Leiden University, consisting of an exactingly machined 1,150 kg sphere cryogenically cooled to 20 mK. The spherical configuration allows for equal sensitivity in all directions, and is somewhat experimentally simpler than larger linear devices requiring high vacuum. Events are detected by measuring deformation of the detector sphere. Minigrail is highly sensitive in the 2 to 4 kHz range, suitable for detecting gravitational waves from rotating neutron star instabilities or small black hole mergers. The Mario Schenberg antenna is located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Interferometers. A more sensitive detector uses laser interferometry to measure gravitational wave induced motion between separated free masses. This allows the masses to be separated by large distances increasing the signal size. A further advantage is that it is sensitive to a wide range of frequencies not just those near a resonance as is the case for Weber bars. Ground-based interferometers are now operational. Currently, the most sensitive is LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. LIGO has three detectors, one in Livingston, Louisiana, the other two in the same vacuum tubes at the Hanford site in Richland, Washington. Each consists of two light storage arms which are 2 to 4 km in length. These are at 90 degree angles to each other, with the light passing through 1 meter diameter vacuum tubes running the entire 4 km. A passing gravitational wave will slightly stretch one arm as it shortens the other. This is precisely the motion to which an interferometer is most sensitive. Even with such long arms, the strongest gravitational waves will only change the distance between the ends of the arms by at most roughly 10-18 meters. LIGO should be able to detect gravitational waves as small as h approximately equals 5 times 10 minus 22 display style h approximately 5 times 10 caret minus 22 Upgrades to LIGO and other detectors such as Virgo, GEO 600, and TAMA 300 should increase the sensitivity still further. The next generation of instruments advanced LIGO and advanced Virgo will be more than 10 times more sensitive. Another highly sensitive interferometer KAGRA, is currently in the design phase. A key point is that a 10 times increase in sensitivity radius of reach increases the volume of space accessible to the instrument by 1000. This increases the rate at which detectable signals should be seen from 1 per tens of years of observation, to tens per year. Interferometric detectors are limited at high frequencies by shot noise, which occurs because the lasers produce photons randomly. One analogy is to rainfall. The rate of rainfall, like the laser intensity, is measurable, but the raindrops, like photons, fall at random times, causing fluctuations around the average value. This leads to noise at the output of the detector, much like radio static. In addition, for sufficiently high laser power, the random momentum transferred to the test masses by the laser photons shakes the mirrors, masking signals at low frequencies. Thermal noise e Brownian motion, is another limit to sensitivity. In addition to these stationary constant noise sources, all ground-based detectors are also limited at low frequencies by seismic noise and other forms of environmental vibration, and other non-stationary Noise sources, creaks in mechanical structures, lightning or other large electrical disturbances, etc. may also create noise masking an event or may even imitate an event. 
All these must be taken into account and excluded by analysis before a detection may be considered a true gravitational wave event. Space-based interferometers, such as LISA and DECIGO, are also being developed. LISA's design calls for three test masses forming an equilateral triangle, with lasers from each spacecraft to each other spacecraft forming two independent interferometers. LISA is planned to occupy a solar orbit trailing the Earth, with each arm of the triangle being 5 million kilometers. This puts the detector in an excellent vacuum far from Earth-based sources of noise, though it will still be susceptible to shot noise, as well as artifacts caused by cosmic rays and solar wind. An Atomic Gravitational Wave Interferometric Sensor is an alternative means to detect gravitational waves, proposed in 2008. Topic. Einstein at home In some sense, the easiest signals to detect should be constant sources. Supernovae and neutron star or black hole mergers should have larger amplitudes and be more interesting, but the waves generated will be more complicated. The waves given off by a spinning, bumpy neutron star would be monochromatic, like a pure tone in acoustics. It would not change very much in amplitude or frequency. The Einstein at Home project is a distributed computing project similar to SETI at Home intended to detect this type of simple gravitational wave. By taking data from LIGO and GEO, and sending it out in little pieces to thousands of volunteers for parallel analysis on their home computers, Einstein at Home can sift through the data far more quickly than would be possible otherwise. Topic. High frequency detectors. There are currently two detectors focusing on detections at the higher end of the gravitational wave spectrum 7 to 105 Hz, one at University of Birmingham, England, and the other at INFN Genoa, Italy. A third is under development at Chongqing University, China. The Birmingham detector measures changes in the polarization state of a microwave beam circulating in a closed loop about 1 meter across. Two have been fabricated and they are currently expected to be sensitive to periodic spacetime strains of h 2 times 10 minus 13 h z display style h sim 2 times 10 caret minus 13 sqrt math at h z given as an amplitude spectral density the INFN Genoa detector is a resonant antenna consisting of two coupled spherical superconducting harmonic oscillators a few centimeters in diameter. The oscillators are designed to have when uncoupled, almost equal resonant frequencies. The system is currently expected to have a sensitivity to periodic spacetime strains of h 2 times 10 minus 17 h Z display style h sim 2 times 10 caret minus 17 sqrt math at h z with an expectation to reach a sensitivity of h 2 times 10 minus 20 h z display style h sim 2 times 10 caret minus 20 sqrt math at h z the Chongqing University detector is planned to detect relic high-frequency gravitational waves with the predicted typical parameters approximately 1,010 Hz 10 GHz and H approximately 10-30 to 10-31. <laughs> Pulsar timing arrays A different approach to detecting gravitational waves is used by pulsar timing arrays, such as the European Pulsar Timing Array, the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves, and the Parkes Pulsar Timing Array. These projects propose to detect gravitational waves by looking at the effect these waves have on the incoming signals from an array of 20 to 50 well-known millisecond pulsars. As a gravitational wave passing through the Earth contracts space in one direction and expands space in another, the times of arrival of pulsar signals from those directions are shifted correspondingly. By studying a fixed set of pulsars across the sky, these arrays should be able to detect gravitational waves in the nanohertz range. Such signals are expected to be emitted by pairs of merging supermassive black holes. 
Topic: <laughs> Cosmic microwave background polarization. The cosmic microwave background, radiation left over from when the universe cooled sufficiently for the first atoms to form, can contain the imprint of gravitational waves from the very early universe. The microwave radiation is polarized. The pattern of polarization can be split into two classes called E modes and B modes. This is in an analogy to electrostatics where the electric field, e field has a vanishing curl and the magnetic field, B field has a vanishing divergence. The E modes can be created by a variety of processes, but the B modes can only be produced by gravitational lensing, gravitational waves, or scattering from dust. On 17 March 2014, astronomers at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics announced the apparent detection of the imprint gravitational waves in the cosmic microwave background, which, if confirmed, would provide strong evidence for inflation and the Big Bang. However, on 19 June 2014, lowered confidence in confirming the findings was reported, and on 19 September 2014, even more lowered confidence. Finally, on January 30, 2015, the European Space Agency announced that the signal can be entirely attributed to dust in the Milky Way. Topic. Operational and planned gravitational wave detectors 1995 Tama 300 1995 Geo 600 2002 LIGO 2003 Mario underscore Schenberg underscore gravitational underscore wave underscore detector 2003 Minigrail 2005 Pulsar timing array for Parkes radio telescope 2006 Clio 2007 Virgo interferometer 2015 Advanced LIGO 2016 Advanced Virgo 2018 KAGRA LCGT 2023 Indigo LIGO India 2025 Tianqin 2027 Desi Hertz Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory DECIGO 2034 Laser Interferometer Space Antenna Lisa Pathfinder A development mission was launched December 2015 2030s Einstein Telescope Topic See also Gravitational wave astronomy Detection theory Matched filter Topic References Topic. External links Video 436 Detecting a Gravitational Wave, Dennis Overby, NYT, the 11th of February 2016. Video 71-29 Press Conference Announcing Discovery. LIGO Detects Gravitational Waves. National Science Foundation, the 11th of February 2016.